The Men's World Cup begins in Qatar this Sunday, but controversies from human rights concerns to onerous press restrictions have shadowed the event. To host the Cup, the tiny Gulf nation went on a stadium-building spree, bringing in thousands upon thousands of migrant laborers. But there have been numerous stories about the largely South Asian workforce being mistreated, and more than three dozen have died on the job. We partnered with independent filmmakers, Fat Rat Films, to hear from some of those workers about their experience with rampant abuse, low pay, and squalid living conditions. As the Men's World Cup kicks off in Qatar, many of the workers behind the games are now thousands of miles away, back in their home countries without the money they say they're owed. Young men like Anish and Narayan, farm workers from Nepal, who went to Qatar to build stadiums in the hope of building better lives for themselves. We can't earn money here, so we have to go abroad. I could earn almost double of what I earn here. That is why I went. The promise of good wages, a few years of hard work to support family and start a nest egg, is a seductive one for young Nepalis. But to secure the job, they must first pay agents a hefty recruitment fee, illegal under Qatari law, but common practice. It's a fee they can only afford by taking out massive loans. This is normal. Everyone pays this. People say free visa, free ticket. In reality, this does not happen. Almost all people from Nepal pay recruitment fee. Anish borrowed 200,000 Nepali rupees, just over $1,500, more than a year's salary in Nepal. We were told that all our expenses would be reimbursed as soon as we arrived. They told us not to worry. This was all a lie. The winner is Qatar. Since Qatar won the bid to host the World Cup 12 years ago, there have been numerous reports of worker exploitation, substandard living conditions, and worker deaths on construction sites. The small Gulf state relies on immigrant labor for its workforce, and in 2017, it pledged reform of working conditions. A commitment to the International Labor Organization, the adoption of minimum wage, and a system of monitoring labor practices were welcomed by the head of FIFA, Gianni Infantino. In a very short time, the progress in terms of human rights is uh, you know, really groundbreaking. But now an explosive report from Equidem, a human rights organization, alleges that the changes were only surface deep. Mustafa Kadri, the CEO of Equidem, explains that in reality, immigrant workers were still being subject to systemic abuse by the companies and officials in Qatar. We interviewed nearly a thousand workers over an 18 month period. There's a very clear picture that emerges. Workers who have built these stadiums for the World Cup have been subjected to forced labor practices, and some of the biggest companies in those projects actively hid those workers from the monitoring process. It's really clear that this is a tournament built on the back of forced labor. A Qatari government spokesman called Equidem's report, quote, a completely unbalanced picture of the significant progress versus the inevitable challenges that remain. But what Anish was served at dinner time didn't feel like progress. Sometimes the company gave us rotten food. The fish would smell disgusting. It used to give us diarrhea. Even something as basic as getting adequate water in the desert heat was a challenge. It got up to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. We didn't get the water we needed. The water we got was almost 90 percent ice. We asked why they did that and told them it was impossible to drink water like that. They said they froze it because if they provided normal water, the workers would drink more. The only time there was adequate water, they say, was when an inspection was due. The company was only nervous when FIFA came to inspect. As part of the 2017 reforms, regular spot checks by FIFA officials were performed to ensure compliance with high standards in worker welfare. The idea was to create a space where workers could talk directly to FIFA. But workers say that the company made sure they never got that chance. They would ring the fire alarm on purpose. 
When all the workers gathered at the assembly point, they would turn off the alarm, make everyone get on buses and drive us away from the stadium. The company would tell FIFA that we had all gone for lunch. The systems created in 2017 to hold the companies to account on their treatment were being purposefully evaded. But still, even two months ago, the head of Qatar's Supreme Committee overseeing the games hailed the protections in place at an annual global affairs forum. We launched worker welfare for, uh, forums uh, within uh, the Supreme Committee for the construction companies that were involved in the Supreme Committee. And these were set up uh, to ensure that workers had a safe environment where they can raise their concerns and grievances without any fear of reprisal. Even when Anish and Narayan could complain, they say their concerns were ignored, and they knew that complaining meant they could lose their jobs. One day, many of us went to make a complaint. We got a bit loud. Later, they called all of us to the camp and said if we did this again, they would send us back home. If the foreman complained about the workers, they could get fired. If workers reacted about anything, instead the workers were changed. Because of this, workers did not protest at all. They used to punish us for complaining. They used to make us sign the warning letter. We were in a situation where we had to tolerate things as they were. Quitting was not an option. Anish and Narayan were trapped in their situation by the 36 percent interest on their recruitment fee loan and unpaid wages. I desperately wanted to go home in those moments, but then I would remember my family's situation. Apart from the loan I took to pay the recruitment fee, my family had other debts. We were around $5,300 in debt. I could not even think of coming back to Nepal. Eventually, they did go back. They had to. Anish had his work permit taken away when he tried to switch jobs. Narayan was deported, he says, under false COVID-related pretenses. Neither, they say, were paid what they were owed. About $4,000 for Anish and about $1,700 for Narayan. I had expected to earn $9,000 in these three years, but I earned a third of it. Not only me, there are thousands of workers like me who are not getting what they are owed. There are many of us. Nareen and Anish are not alone. There are thousands of other workers like them, each owed thousands of dollars. We estimate in total up to about half a billion dollars of money. Those lives could be transformed if Qatar and FIFA compensated those workers who made the tournament possible. The teams taking part in the World Cup will share an estimated $440 million between them. Equidum is calling for FIFA to set aside the same amount as a fund to reimburse the migrant workers who've made it all possible. The stages are set for one of the world's biggest tournaments to kick off. The hope is that those who helped to build them won't be left behind.